Hello everybody and welcome back. And last week's video, we had finished the concept we were looking about the fallen angels in Genesis 6, chapter 6, from first to first six verses. And we understood the actual situation that took place during this period before the first flood. In the final verses we read, God was really disappointed and felt disappointed by the situation and how evil things continued rather than to change into a godly way by the angel's presence to help the people to be uplifted but rather it continued to go in a unrighteous way. So actually what happened in this situation and why the scriptures use the word repented and grieved in God's heart and why it's written to written evil continues into this earth so though here the, the scripture narrates the incident well and self-explanatory we read in first we can read and understand about this in second peter second chapter and we can read the first three verses to understand about this in situation and how it explains the situation in a bit more detail from what we la read last time so let us read that right now but False prophets among those, among prophets, also rose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, you who will secretly be, be bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, bring them, bringing upon them themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their sense. Sensu sensuality and because of them they the them the way of the truth will be blasphemized blasphemized and in the in their greed they will exploit you with false words their condemnation from a long ago is not idle and their destruction is not sleep asleep sorry Okay, so we understand. So after he's quoted here, the apostles Peter continues to talk about the comparatively the fallen angels in the Noah period in the fourth and fifth verses before this period. We can see, so we can get more understanding when we go through, go through the first three verses of Apostle Peter and why he compared the fallen angels during the first world. The scriptures tells us the first. Part, there was a false prophet among the people. Normally, prophets are God's chosen people who are supposed to preach and deliver the plans of God, to word to preach towards the people and act towards the people according to his will. And we can read one verse from Amos chapter 3, verse 7, and, to, and now to get to the definition of a prophet from our scriptures. So, as we understand so far, they've, been, they've described someone as a false prophet. But we understand a prophet is a person who has the duty of spreading the gospel and the word and preaching God's word in his will. So, we can see what a prophet really is in Amos 3rd chapter 7th verse. So, let's get that right now. So we can read that now in Amos, 3rd chapter, 7th verse. It says, For the Lord God does not does nothing without revealing his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So that verse can pretty much sum up what it's trying to say here. We can clearly see that God is saying in this verse of Amos, 3rd chapter, 7th verse, that he does not do any task without revealing his plan towards the prophets, we can see. But here, Apostle Paul, the, Peter, sorry, in this verse that we read, calls them false prophets. This means they are not doing the plan or sharing the God word, gospel of God, rather they are doing extremely against it and they added, and they add, what they're doing there is false teachings and they will, and which they will secretly be, bring upon themselves destructive actions in our faith because of what they're doing upon us. By providing these false teachings, they're secretly bringing upon destructive actions in our faith in a more, much more pleasant and conceiving, convincing way, I should say. 
Why he says secretly though? Because like I said, because it looks more interest interesting. It looks it's more interesting, but later it will deceive us how the adversary uses his methods like he did to Eve in the Eden Garden. The adversary does many methods to get his plan into action that the God's word is not found out and the God's word is completely diminished from people's hearing. He does various ways so it would appeal to the people. For example, now he's in, we can see like Apostle Peter has mentioned about the false prophet. It seems convincing at first as they are prophet, a person who who's one who's been given the se given the secrets to preach the word. But we can clearly see here that this false prophet has been identified by Peter. And because of this, we can see this false prophet is the one who is sharing upon us the destruction upon our faith itself. So, so we can understand this. Also, he is giving us a caution. And this is written, we can read again now in 2 Peter 2, chapter 3, verse. If we read this verse, we can read it. And... We can read that right now. And it says, many will follow their sensuality, we can see. And because of the, them, the way of the truth will be blasphemized. So we can clearly see here that he's giving us a caution, caution which he has written here for us. So that is all for today. I hope you like the video. So before we end the video, let us go through what we went through. So what did we understand? We've understood about how there was false prophets in this period of time. As we read, read the four, first three verses in Second Peter compared to fourth and fifth, we understand that these, these verses are talking about a false prophet being introduced here. And Peter is explaining this. There is this false prophet in this place. And um, we can understand here. The prophet here, we understood in Amos 3rd chapter 7th verse, the person who was given the divine secret by God himself to preach this word, as there were people who preached and sh explained the word of God to everyone. But we understand that in this point, we can see that Peter explained that he is a false prophet, meaning he is saying the wrong doctrine. He is doing false teachings and most like, and is in the way of saturn these false teachings are there to basically be the destruct sharing us the destruction upon us to our faith because saturn's goal obviously is again once applying through false prophets as being identified by peter as they seem that saturn wants a way to deceive the people in order that they don't believe the god's truth god is truth is not something to be believed in saturn is clearly conceiving this thing and he does not want anyone to trust god or believe in god as he wants his himself to be the total power of all and we can see in this situation again he is doing a cunning and sinister way along to get his word to get god's word to look bad to be something that God does not want because this is not the God's teaching of course because this is the false teaching and this obviously would then get the false doctrine and make God unhappy in this point and the truth will never be able to be found out so Saturn keeps on doing his schemes in order to take the top place that he wishes to cover so then we can understand that here he is doing these he's bringing in these false prophets in this place like he did in the Eden garden and we understood about how peter's given us a caution in the second verse that we read already that they were the way because of them the way the truth will be blasphemized so that is all for today see you next time bye